Hello and welcome to the Body Align Pro podcast. My name is Isaac Osborne, founder and CEO of Body Align Pro. In this podcast, we interview practitioners who use Body Align Pro and some of the leading experts in the health industry who are committed to taking a scientific approach to improving the form and function of the body and the growth and development of their practice. For more information about Body Align Pro, visit www.bodyalignpro.com. Hello, everybody. In this episode, we are lucky to have Dr. Robert Schleip. He is a director of the Fascia Research Group in Ulm University and also research director of the European Rolfing Association. He has been a rolfing practitioner since 1978, a Feldenkrais practitioner since 1987, and became a faculty member of the Rolf Institute of Structural Integration USA in 1992. He has an MA degree in psychology in University of Hildburg and a PhD in human biology, UM University. Since approximately 2004, he turned more towards the scientific exploration of how fascia responds to different stimulations. His own laboratory work on active fascial contractility was awarded in 2006 with the Vladimir Janda Award for Musculoskeletal Medicine. Today, with Tony, uh, today, Together with Tom Finley, PhD, and several other colleagues, he was instrumental in organizing the first International Fossil Research Congress held at Harvard Medical School Conference Center, Boston, in 2007, as well the now triannual subsequent Congress. He has published numerous books and other publications on fascia and connective tissue research, more at somatics.de and fasciaresearch.de. I'll include those in the show notes. This was a very exciting uh, time that for me to, to interview Dr. Schleip in this podcast. I've been a big fan of his since roughly around 2002, 2003. Uh, I got a lot out of his articles that he has written in the somatics.de uh, and has really influenced my practice heavily over the years. So I was really excited to uh, to interview him today, and it was really a lot of fun because it was he has such high energy and he's so excited about what he's talking about that it's just absolutely infectious and and fascinating to talk to him. And he is creating lots of tools and gadgets that are I think going to really change how we do our practice because it'll give us more data on what we're doing, what we're feeling when we do body work and connective tissue. And, um, so it was a lot of fun talking with him. So without further ado, let's get Robert on the show. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention that, uh, he dropped a bomb on us today. Um, and towards the end of the show, he talks about new research that just came out about nerve endings in fascia. And so it's really exciting and uh, it's pretty amazing discovery and it's going to, it should have a dramatic effect on how we perceive what we are doing. So let's get started. Welcome to the show, Robert. I'm so grateful to have you on the show. Um, Thank you for joining us today. Thank you, Isaac. I'm very happy to connect with you and I'm very much looking forward to our collaboration. Wonderful. So for our, our, uh, our viewers and listeners out there, uh, if you don't mind it, and this is a, this is a, since you are, are one of the most leading experts in fascia, I would love to, a quick, um, if you would be willing a quick elevator pitch of, of what is fascia for those out there who may not be familiar with it or, or don't know exactly what it is before we really get into, um, what we're going to talk about today. So if you, if you wouldn't mind giving the quick intro into what fascia is. Well, it's the connective tissue that uh, the butcher, but also, which is not quite a butcher, uh, the anatomists have been uh, neglecting and been throwing away. So if you have a piece of meat, it is the white envelope around it. And that is one expression of this body-wide uh, network of fibrous collagenous connective tissue that we call fascia. And it had been considered to be more or less a uh, shopping bag, a wrapping, and uh, that it would have no additional functions. 
And now in the last 10 years, medical research, but some of the pioneers in complementary medicine knew it before, but the school medicine has finally found out that it plays much more functions in medicine. And now there is a lot of excitement in research to discover that this background, neglected Cinderella tissue, is now almost a star in musculoskeletal research. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you for that. Um, all right, so on to my, uh, my first uh, question for you is uh, one of the things that, I mean, there's so many things that you've inspired me with in your, uh, your papers and your books, but uh, recently I just, I, uh, actually, I got really excited when I saw on uh, Facebook on the Structural Integrators private page, um, someone had posted a video, a video of you using uh, the Clarius, uh, I think it's uh, L7, Mm -hmm. um, ultrasound device and you're mm -hmm. capturing images of tissue at um, what is it I think the the it goes to maybe seven millimeters of depth I think uh, I don't well, know, I don't know what depth but, uh, for at. pressure we, we focus more on the on the surface tissue. the surface and they are usually within one or two centimeters under the skin mm -hmm. yeah. And, and so you've been using this device uh, now for how long? Um, not, not a year, less, less than a year. And, I, and I'm still learning how to use it. Let me see if I can share my screen here. Sure. Do you see this? Yep, I see it. Uh, okay. So you see the ultrasound head here on the left. Mm -hmm. And you can have it in your hand just like this uh, i don't have one here but it would be about this size so mm -hmm. you hold it in your hand it is it's a little bit wider than this and of course you put the gel on it and if you are a bit more an emp empathetic practitioner you would put a warm gel on it before you put it on the skin of the patient uh -huh. and then it projects the image to your uh, tablet or to, or to your smartphone Mm -hmm. And you can see the layers of the tissue with an amazing clarity. Mm. So you can measure if the lumbar fascia is 1.5 millimeters thick or 1.8 millimeters thick. Wow. And uh, this is very exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I'll show you later some pictures how you can differentiate. May maybe I show them here on, let me see. Ah, yeah, there it is. Mm -hmm. So that would be if I hold this tool on my sternocleido muscle, uh, muscle here, uh -huh. and then right there, you would have the skin, subcutaneous connective tissue, and then this two millimeters would be the fascial envelope of the sternocleido muscle. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you have a patient who has chronic neck pain, maybe after whiplash injury or without, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You want to find out, is, it, is the pain related to any stiffening or pathological changes uh, in the envelope or in the meat inside the envelope? So, so we, in recently we introduced the term white tissue, which is not always white, but it's more whitish uh -huh. or milky, which is the fascial envelope and the red tissue, which are the contractile myofibers inside. And in the past, people just mix them. But uh, as I will show you here in a minute, uh, this would be a normal envelope. But if you have a person where the envelope uh, starts to become fibrotic, it will be twice as thick. It can be four millimeters thick. Or as shown here, you see really there is much more white tissue here. Then the red tissue underneath may not be hard and contracted. So then all the hardness comes from the envelope that you have there. Hmm. And, and that is quite interesting. And the Stecos are now proposing a model that you could recognize with the ultrasound, but I don't recognize it always, where the white layers have bifurcated and you have dense ground substance in between, in which the ground substance contains a lot of hyaluronic acid, not of the lubricant style that I thought is the only way, but hyaluronic acid, 
uh, in an acidic environment can become a sticky glue. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. you also have a, a change in all of this. So let me see. I'll stop the transmission to see if I'm back. Oh, it worked. Yeah, right. there you are. <laughs> that you have there. <laughs> Uh, if you want, I can just leave this for 10 seconds. Are you ready? I'm going to bring you my favorite tools. No! You will love it. At least I do. So uh, here I have a Bavarian sausage. Uh huh. And on one end, I put a lot of box tape around it. Uh huh. So that would be a fibrotic condition. So if you palpate it with closed eyes, you would sense it's stiffer here than here. And with your finger, you would have the challenge, but ultrasound could help you. Is the stiffness coming from a thickening of the envelope, which is the case here on this mm -hmm. end, or is the stiffness coming from a hardening of the sausage inside? Interesting. And in your clients, you have some clients where the red tissue, which is inside here, so it's mm -hmm. a very stiff sausage, and then the first half of a millimeter is soft, and then the stiffening happens when you indent deeper. Right, and that is right. very important, because if you have a client where the fascia is soft and the muscle is hard, mm -hmm. you may not need to do fascia therapy. Right. You could right. do Feldenkrais relaxation, mm -hmm. uh, muscular relaxation, etc. Mm -hmm. But if the red porridge is soft and the envelope is hard, mm -hmm. then muscular relaxation will not have a long-lasting effect. It's then you need to think, and ultrasound can help you with that. So this I like is, that very much. It's yeah. amazing. It's really amazing yeah. to see to see these this imagery and your explanation of this, uh, because this is something I don't practice Feldenkrais. I've been inspired by Feldenkrais, but I, I have corrective exercises that that I utilize with with my patients or clients. And there is definitely time when I feel exactly what you're explaining. Yeah. And instead of doing the connective tissue work or structural integration work, I do the corrective exercises and, and yield much better results, changes in posture and alignment and range of motion mm -hmm. and pain relief. Whereas when I feel the other aspect of that dense tissue around the, around the muscle, mm -hmm. I get better results with the connective tissue work or structural yeah. integration work. Yeah, yeah. That's wonderful to, to, to see that, that explanation uh illustrated for for all of us thank you yeah. so uh, ultrasound used to be on the other camp of uh, healthcare mm -hmm. where medical doctors who are very good with apparatus and not very good with people <laughs> have been using this <laughs> high tech uh, uh, equipment and uh, I'm very uh, congruent with Tom Myers. Uh, I don't think he invented it, but he used it very nicely to say modern medicine is high tech and low touch quality. Mm -hmm. And what the structural integrators and other manual therapists and Feldenkrais people should focus is not being secondary orthopedic doctors. They should come exactly 180 degrees from a different angle where you have low-tech and high-touch qualities. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think that is very important. Yeah. So if you then open through the back door this high-tech quality that I'm now advocating, mm -hmm. you should always ask yourself, is this really helpful? Or are we trying to become white-coat medical doctors <laughs> by the back door? <laughs> Absolutely. And 
So that's why I think if it's without cables, this is the first tool that I know, at least that has license uh, that, that you can use and that you can put in your hand, but then you can put it next on the table and use your own hand to palpate. Yeah. yeah. So uh, if you use any of these tools, I like them very much, mm -hmm. uh, please use your own hand. And there are certain things like the temperature, the texture, etc., that you cannot get with these fancy instruments. Yeah. But what the fancy instrument has is an exact memory over time that you wouldn't have. For example, if you feel, if you measure the thickness of the lumbar fascia and you give the client some exercises, how they can use a foam roller in a rolfing like manner mm -hmm. and you don't see them for five six weeks and then you palpate them again with your hand and if their lumbar fascia has gotten 10 percent softer and you have palpated 96 people in between you wouldn't recognize if there are six right. weeks in between of right. course if it's 50 percent thicker or thinner or softer you would recognize Mm -hmm. But a difference of 8% after six weeks, give me a break. I don't think anybody can feel that. But if you have the tool, you can say, holy cow, you know, 10% in, in four weeks. Continue yeah. what you're doing. And uh, so, so I think uh, these technology, if you use it wisely, mm -hmm. and if you can push it at the side and still have the client and your hands and a non-tech loaded environment, around you, uh, this can be quite beneficial. On this picture, in case you see it here, you see in the middle uh, a very uh, expensive uh, we, system. We can't see uh, the photo. Ah, uh, you can't see? Uh, yeah, because uh, yeah, you have to put the screen sharing back up. Ah, uh, let me do the screen share. Thanks for telling me. Okay, there we go. It's nice when you find out you have been talking to yourself. <laughs> okay. Are we now on the same yep. plate? Yep. Yeah. So here you have this tool that you hold in your hand. Mm -hmm. Here you have the tablet or the iPhone, which is nice mm -hmm. because you can put it on the table. Now, what this fancy tool not yet uh, is able to deliver is this uh, elastography map shown in the picture. Hmm. And uh, that is uh, still uh, at least $30,000. And uh, I wouldn't expect that to have that in a um, structural integrator's office. I would even question if it's useful. But that is a very nice thing because you are trying to measure not only the thickness and the arrangement, but the stiffness. So there, the ultrasound head makes a vibration, and you measure how quickly the tissue vibrates. And that mm -hmm. is translated. Uh, for example, here, the red tissue is quite stiff and the blue tissue is less stiff. And that's how it's translated. They use it to discover trigger points in the human body. But what now a col uh, colleagues of ours have done is that you just use a force gawk, which is similar when you travel and you want to have something to measure how heavy your, suit your suitcase is. Uh -huh. You're basically using a false cork like that. Uh -huh. And you can get these for $200, and they just uh, connect them with the Clarius or <laughs> similar portable tool. Uh -huh. And then you measure uh, the thickness of the lumbar fascia without pressure, and then with 10 Newton, and finally with 50 Newton. And you see how much it deforms. And that's very similar to what you do with your hand. So you measure, and so you will be able uh, with this tool to show um, which layer is stiffer. Is it the envelope or is it the um, inside of it? So, th so that is something where, where we are looking in the future with this uh, very nice tool here. Very fun. Very, very yeah, fun. fun. So if, if say, uh, say a, a practitioner of structural integration or, or whatever methodology that one of these uh, uh, practitioner practices, uh, Feldenkrais or, or whatever, that wants to measure this with the Clarius device, mm -hmm. um, how much time does it typically take you to, out of, out of like, say, an hour session, most people do an hour, hour session with their, with their patients or the clients, 
how much time does it take take you to to utilize this device um, in in that session? More than one minute, uh, definitely less than ten. Um, if you are like me, I get lost in toys. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's very easy to do. And then you realize, oh shit! I wanted to work on the other leg too. <laughs> <laughs> but but of course, if you work for thirty years, you learn your weaknesses and you make up for them, and you start to discipline yourself. I'm not here to play. You know, I'm I'm here to focus together with the client. Uh -huh. make <laughs> so so I would think anything between three and six minutes. Three and six minutes. Yeah. That's great. But don't uh, use it with the client unless you have experimented with your wife and with your children, etc. Yeah, get to learn the device. So, that, so that's the same more. thing because they are paying for your time. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Unless, unless, but, but it's a fancy tool. So uh, uh, this one still costs as much as a small car. Uh huh. So much more than a roofing table. Uh -huh. um, six to seven thousand U.S. dollars. Uh, there is now a Chinese company coming out with something slightly less, mm -hmm. uh, but I wouldn't know how good their service is. Mm -hmm. uh, I would alert you, unless you are in a big competition where you have to prove in the next half a year that you are the most technical, fascia-oriented uh, Pilates uh, practice with 10 people employed in your city, uh, to wait because yeah. per year, the quality increases about 30%. Right, right. So in three years, you will have twice as good resolution. And yeah. the prices, they also go down for the same quality, 30%. Yeah. So it, if, you, if you can control your longing to buy one, <laughs> and I'm, say, I wait, I exercise patience, <laughs> You will be very smart because next year with the same amount of money, you can get a Porsche. So yeah. that would be my advice. Yeah, I, I definitely taking you up on the advice. I looked into the Clarius myself and purchasing one, but at this point in time, the, the $7,000 is not something no, that, no, no. that I can it's justify for my practice. No. <laughs> if, if you are seven or eight fascia oriented people, like we mm -hmm. have that, we have uh, centers like this in Vienna, in Berlin, etc. Where a lot of practitioners, not only structural integrators, mm -hmm. uh, are using the fascia popularity, which is pretty big now in Europe here, mm -hmm. uh, to say we are different, we are more modern, etc. Right. And then you want to have a tool like that. Because yeah, many people say, I have been treated psychologically, I've been treated for my muscles, my nutrition, but I still have these backache problems. And I yes. suspect there is a key in fascia. So I want to go somewhere where people are focused on fascia, and that includes a good diagnosis. And if you then only touch them, that is what everybody else did before. But if you can use a tool additional to your touch, and they feel like they are at the right address. Absolutely. So, 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 uh, so if you're only one or two pr uh, practitioners working together, please wait. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but uh, but if you are larger practice, uh, maybe this is the time to look in it, into it now. Yeah, it's a, it's so exciting. So it's so exciting to see all these devices that are coming out. I mean, you have yeah, obviously you have a plethora here that you're showing here. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you, <laughs> so I think this is one one of your subjects to explore the different tools. Absolutely, I, I'm so looking. At, talk, I'm, yeah. looking into, I'm playing with infrared right now. Uh, okay. Yeah, and I'm also. Uh, it, one of the reasons I, you know, contacted you is is because I was so curious about this device. But these are the sort of things that I'm wanting to incorporate with the app in the future, mm -hmm. and uh, so that we can connect to these type of devices as they get smaller. Oh, and, that uh, would be interesting. Yeah, yeah. So Holy moly! Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. I'm working yeah, on that right now in the background, and yeah. uh, there's a few uh, few things that I I have going on that. It's going to be a little while, but but um, you will be busy. I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a, it excites me because the, to have these, like you like you said, to have the low touch yeah. aspect, mm -hmm. and for us to have this technology, it just allows for for larger uh, larger research projects. Yeah, 
and uh, more evidence or more, I should, I, I should say, uh, more exploration into what we're doing and how we are different in structural integration and um, what things are doing inside the body as yeah. we work with people. Feldenkrais, corrective exercise, yeah. whatever it may be. So I'll leave you, if it's okay, again for 20 seconds. Yes, go ahead. Go to my toy box <laughs> to show you two more of the tools. But I think this Wonderful. fits well. Yeah. Wonderful, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yep. So I'll talk about the two-point discrimination, uh -huh. which is a very simple tool. <laughs> Yeah, it looks like uh, just calipers. It's used a lot in pain research recently, mm -hmm. where you take an area in the body, for example, people who have complex regional pain syndrome, mm -hmm. that means they usually had a cast with which they had some psychological or physical problems for where, if they had a fracture and they have, have been wearing a cast. Mm -hmm. And often, which is quite common, uh, you take the cast off, but they have painful irritation for months afterwards, not only where the cast was, but in the whole limb. So in the whole right arm or the whole left leg or something like that. And what they found out is that this goes along with a shift in the body mapping in their brain. And you cannot operate the brain and it will be very expensive to study that, but you can see how good is the proprioception and they do to that by two-point discrimination. If you ask them to close their eyes and you put it, let's say, here at uh, one inch difference and you either touch with two points simultaneously or only with one. And they cannot see it, but they have to guess it or better to feel it. And of course, if you make it five centimeters large, everybody can feel it at their hand. If you do it one centimeter, everybody can feel it at their lips and at their fingertips because that's where your proprioception is very, very clear. Mm -hmm. However, on your lower back, nobody can feel an inch different. And that's what they found there. So people who have certain myofascial pathologies, low back pain, complex regional pain syndrome, that their two-point discrimination in the related area is numb. So they have a larger distance there. Wow. And, and that would be, but, it, but it's more time-consuming. There is a protocol where you use that because you need to do 10 repetitions in order to say, you are not guessing. You are really sensing that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you only may make one measurement and they are just guessing. You may be fooled. So you need to do 10 of them. But that would be something, for example, in a mapping, in an initial setting where somebody complains of low back pain and you do the minimal distance or the maximal distance, uh, no, the minimal distance, that they can really differentiate in certain areas of their body. So you do that at their right lower back and compare it with the left lower back. And that could be put into the imaging that you have of, of the people. Uh, let me share this tool here, which I think is probably the most useful one in the future. So I, I showed you here only a prototype. It's called Indentor Pro. Uh -huh. And the University of Chemnitz, together with us at Ulm University, we are making them in a 3D printer now. And this is, I call it, a digital finger. So if you palpate with your hand, you are increasing the indentation depth, and you measure how is the resistance. So with this tool, uh, you put it somewhere on the body. It has this digital finger here. You tell the indentation depth, so let me do it if I can. So you say, do you want to have fixed force or fixed steps? And I say, I want to have fixed steps. Then what depths do you want to have? And I say five millimeters. I confirm. And then it asks me how many repetitions you want to palpate. And I would recommend three. And you say yes. 
And now it's ready to measure. And let me see. I take something here. And you beep, beep, beep. So you didn't hear the beep. But when you have reached five millimeters, it stops the measurement and also does a beep so that you don't continue further. But if you do, it's not a big mistake. And then it shows you the stiffness. And you can compare the right side with the left side of the tissue. So you could do a mapping with different colors. How stiff is your body at five millimeter steps? And you can also dis decide the depths based on the superficial connective tissue. So if you take the tissue here with a caliper and you take half of it, that would be the depths at which you want to use this indentometer in case you are interested more in the stiffness of the fascia than of the subcutaneous connective tissue on top or the muscles underneath. That's amazing. So it is amazing. And that now only costs $480, uh, dollars, which is almost as much as a massage table. <laughs> but it's 10% of the next tool that is available on the market. And you can use it also as an algometer. So this was shown here in the middle. That is a tool that they use a lot in pain research. And that, and that was a predecessor of this tool where you push on the tissue and the client only has their subjective experience. They do not see how many newtons or how many kilograms per square inch or square centimeter you are pushing. And you ask them, tell me when the pressure becomes pain. And of course, mm -hmm. that's a subjective measurement, but it's semi-objective because they don't remember uh, at what number they told you last time, even if they want to please you. <laughs> 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 and say it's the same, it hasn't changed, you know, it will be very difficult for them to do so. <laughs> of course, it's not impossible. And, and that is, is very similar. So animal manual therapists, they do that. You touch the horse always with the same force and you realize where are the sensitive places. So this is called algometry. You don't measure stiffness, you measure pressure pain threshold. Interesting. And, and you could do a, a easy body mapping. Of course, you yeah. always need to do it in the same position. Mm -hmm. But if you are doing an intake, if somebody is coming for five sessions because they have fibromyalgia, and you want to say, let's give me five sessions, you have been treated for six years, and you're still uh, aching everywhere, I cannot promise whether I can help you, but I have an idea. And uh, if you're willing, you come to my office for 90 minutes and I do a thorough examination of your body. And I'll give you the mapping with it. And then we work together for three months. You change your nutrition, you do these exercises, you, you fill out a report form. And we, every month we do a new mapping of the stiffness, of the pressure pain threshold, and they can see. Uh, whether there is a 10% improvement and they are still suffering, but they see there is an improvement. Mm -hmm. And, and okay. they wouldn't have that if they only, if you go to your therapist, of course, they should always be on the positive side. And a, ha a glass half empty for them should always be half full. You know, that is a good therapist. But if you, if you ask them after three months, do you see any improvement? And you see that they pause. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I see an improvement. <laughs> I would question. <laughs> but if they can say it's 12% better in terms of your pressure pain threshold, I know we wanted 50% improvement in three months, but it's already 12%. So maybe we need to be more patient. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so, so if we collaborate in the future and you use these tools, and, and that is much more handy because you can also use it additional to your hand. My dream is to have several of these tools compete against each other and then to take the best raw for the osteopaths. You know, those who claim they can feel the liver when they touch your ear. Uh, uh -huh. And have them 
uh, similar like the famous experiments where the best chess players were competing with the best computers in chess. And in the early years, the, the best humans were still better than the best computers. And I liked that very much. But mm -hmm. eventually, the computers learned from the humans and they compete and they were beating them. So maybe in the first years of my competition, of the Isaac Robert uh, competition games, <laughs> that we will host in Las Vegas, uh, <laughs> Uh, people like Emmett Hutchins, like you, etc., uh, they will be better than this tool. That is my hope. Yeah. <laughs> then the tool learn from them. <laughs> but that is only vertical pressure, which yeah. is often what we do. Right. Uh, we are now working on a machine, we don't have it yet, where you do shearing, horizontal shearing. Mm -hmm. So if you are working on scars, like mm -hmm. Sharon Wheeler is, Mm -hmm. Often the vertical pressure is not so much changed, mm -hmm. but the horizontal movement. So we now put uh, little plaster straps on the tissue and mm -hmm. we pull with a string. And we measure with, so we have something like this. Uh -huh. So you can push, but you can also pull on it. Uh -huh. and, then you, and then you pull with one Newton, which is like 100 grams, and you measure how many millimeters traction is this scar piece doing in a cranial direction, in a caudal direction, and also in a suction direction. Interesting. So that is something that we are developing, but it doesn't exist yet. And I think this vertical pressure stiffness and vertical pressure pain sensitivity threshold is something quite easy. Yeah, it, 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 sound, it, sounds, it sounds like it's something that's very basic type of yeah. tool to be able to measure, but yeah. a, what, a great, what a great way to measure it. Yeah. I mean, some people have been doing that. So they use their hands and then they uh -huh. put in numbers one to five, you uh -huh. know, stiff, medium, stiff, etc. Yeah. But your hand it, it's... is, at least in my practice, I'm, I'm now working over 35 years, mm -hmm. is influenced uh, by how much coffee I had in the morning <laughs> and, it's and not the a... last workshop I did on the weekend, you know, yeah, and how much meditation or not I did. <laughs> So um, there is nothing, in at least in uh, psychology, an un unbiased perceptual nervous system is a lie. It does not exist. You can Absolutely. try to be unbiased, but it's definitely not possible. So it means your human hand is anticipating something, even if you don't try to do it. Yes. And on Monday, it will be different if you have a nice woman with a charming smile uh, and lying on your table and you palpate her. And on Friday, you are tired and an older woman who has an ugly smell because of her perfume is lying on, on your table. We lost you, Robert. You're back. Ah, sorry <laughs> about that. <laughs> it's all right. Well... <laughs> Good that you waited so long. <laughs> I had touched with this tool the electric cord. Oh no! And then the power went down because oh. that. So that. Sorry about it. Yeah, <laughs> Not, it's okay. I tried to email Neil because I was. Oh no! I don't have any any other way to contact him. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, well, welcome back. And yeah. uh, so let, let's launch into uh, a couple of other questions that I had. That sure. those tools yeah. are absolutely fascinating, and um, I, I really look forward to um, you know the continued development of what you're doing. And and the Indento Pro, that one that you were that you were demonstrating, that one's for sale right now. Uh, we have about a dozen. Yeah, people can order it. Uh huh. Yeah, it's okay. not yet officially on the web. Uh huh. So it's usually colleagues who order it. So if anybody is seriously interested, they can contact me, and then we have like four to six weeks delivery time for it. Okay, great. Yeah, uh, and yeah. I'll have all your contact information in the show notes. Great. As great. Well. Yeah. What I forgot to show is you can do it three times. Uh huh. And then you get what's called hysteresis. So how much of the movement energy is lost when you repeat it? 
So healthy connective tissue, at least in the Achilles tendon, there it's pretty clear, but probably also in the IT band, uh, if you indent it three times, this, the stiffness at the third time should be the same as before. Hmm. Uh, so you don't have a dampening or loss of the kinetic energy. So it's, it's like a rubber or like a rubber ball. So for locomotion, uh, for Usain Bolt, he wants to have a rubber-like Achilles tendon, not like a chewing gum. Yeah. <laughs> so so the, usually the more pathological you are, the more inflammation you have in the tissue, the more chewing gum-like it gets. Mm -hmm. and, that, and that is something. So if you measure the hysteresis or the loss of energy or the energy storage capacity on the left arm and the same spot on the right arm, and if one loses more energy, it's usually the more painful side. So that is something that we are adding there to this. That's interesting. Yeah. Because uh, the, that side has a lot less elasticity in the, in the yeah. connective tissue and response yeah. in it. And then one more tool, if I can show it, we just got this. But that's more difficult to show in your sessions. Mm -hmm. uh, you measure the water content. Uh, but that is quite nice if you want to understand how a foam roller works. Uh, how the tissue responds to a, a roughing elbow. And my German rolfer colleague, Stefan Denemoser, he did a study by doing a seated lower back roughing stroke and measured the water content. So you glue these on the skin mm -hmm. with a minimal distance, and it does a very low currency electric uh, excitation and you measure the electric resistance in the tissue, which is the same uh, undangerous technology that you have in more expansive bathroom scales that not only measure your body weight, mm -hmm. but also they claim to measure the body mass index or the fat content. Right. So they send an electric current in your right leg up and you measure it on the left leg, mm -hmm. and the resistance is influenced by how much water in relationship to non-water connective tissues you have in your body. Uh, mm -hmm. So this is something very nice to do, uh, to study the sponge effect. Yeah, and, uh, and, the so, and the hydration of the tissue as well, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. It's but fantastic. it takes 10 minutes at least. So I, I wouldn't do this as a standard uh, examination. Yeah. But if you are developing, for example, my colleague, oh, let me show you this tool. This is also very nice. Ah, tool shop today. It is, definitely. This is the gadget show today. <laughs> <laughs> my colleague, Christopher Gordon, developed this wooden stick here. Mm. He calls it the fascia releaser. Mm -hmm. It looks very much like a samurai. It does. Uh, sword, but it has, it's not round, it's roundish, but it has a sharper edge, not mm -hmm. really sharp, and a little bit a uh, thicker edge. Mm -hmm. And uh, it would be good if you can apply it with both hands, mm -hmm. and you're not just rolling, you are doing a shearing motion. Mm. And if you look closely, you would see that in the downward direction, the tissue is compressed and bulging mm -hmm. like you would expect in a sponge. And then you squeeze the old uh, dirty water. D dirty water means having a lot of uh, free radicals in it, waste products, etc. You squeeze the water in front of the edge in the direction of your movement. And you wouldn't do that only once. You wouldn't do that with a sponge also. You do it three to five times in different directions. And then, of course, some of the old water come, it takes a back route and comes back, but not all. Mm -hmm. Some of the water goes away. 90% of the water that goes away goes down with the small venules. Only 10% that goes away goes away through the lymphatics. So it means you don't need to be too paranoid normally in healthy people <laughs> about knowing the lymph direction. 
Right, right. And uh, so that is, this is stick, for example, you can use now uh, this tool to examine which speed is more effective. I, I love to work with super slow motion speeds because I feel I can reach the tiniest pocket, mm -hmm. uh, water containing pocket inside of the loose connective tissue and dehydrate it and then allow fresh water that comes from the blood plasma. And that doesn't have these waste products. It doesn't have inflammatory cytokines yet in it. So mm -hmm. it's really fresh water uh, to come into the tissue. And we can measure that with that stick. Why I love this stick, I didn't plan to be a commercial for him, <laughs> <laughs> is you can push this button here and it does a very soft vibration. So it's not like a steam engine where somebody three meters away turns around and says, what, what is Robert doing? It's, uh, I can hear it now, but it has a very soft vibration. And there are now two studies that have shown that these vibrational tools are more effective than the standard foam rollers. Probably because they have more efferent input, mm -hmm. but in a very nice, uh, uh, gentle manner. And what he has done, where I think he should get a Nobel Prize in manual therapy, he, if you push the button a second time, every six seconds, the magnitude of the vibration gets a little bit softer and then it swells. Mm -hmm. And he educates the clients to treat themselves with it by treating their neck or their lower back or where or their thigh, holding it with both hands, using the slowest possible continuous speed, but to practice HRV breathing. And normally, if you do six seconds uh, or six to seven seconds exhalation and six seconds inhalation, we know it has a very profound effect on the autonomic nervous system. But normally, you are paced either by an acoustic signal or by a visual signal. So you look into the computer and it says, now inhale, now exhale, now inhale, exhale. But if you don't have any of these acoustic or uh, uh, auditory cues. Uh, for example, if I need to do it now, I would need to stop um, talking because if I wanted to pace my breathing with this, let me do it. I really need to use mindful presence. Otherwise, I will miss the changeover. So if the client is using that tool to go through their painful areas where their whole conditioning says, holy cow, mindfulness is not a place here. It needs to be caution, protection is important. Uh, and you need to breathe synchronous with the stick. You, you are slowing down. You are using this interoceptive mindful attention while treating your uh, dynamite uh, whiplash areas in your body. So I think he has uh, done a brilliant uh, invention with this tool uh, where you use roughing like gentle pressure, but also shearing motion that, we can, that you could then measure in terms of the water content with this. But... Uh, He's not only shifting water out of it. You are also shifting uh, fear patterns in your brain. And you learn to go through your lower back where normally everything goes on alert. This is slow pacing meditative breathing. And when you practice that, you, your multitasking brain is not able to focus on something else with the same attitude. Because otherwise you lose the sensation in your hand. Yeah, yeah, that's that's so, fantastic. That's, a, that's yeah, a it's great. great. That's yeah. great. It's cool. called fascia releaser. I don't, I don't know if anybody is distributing it already. I think uh, mm -hmm. Rachel, uh, well, so one of the fascial fitness uh, people wanted to bring it to the states, hmm. but it, it's fairly new. Of course, a roughing elbow is better than this. Yeah, but you can do it at home 
when right. you don't have the money to fly in with a helicopter, Isaac Osborne, and say it <laughs> now. <laughs> no, I haven't been flown in by hel- helicopter yet. By yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that might be fun, though. <laughs> that may be fun, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I did it a few times, but not with the helicopter. Actually, one, one client, he came with his airplane to the sessions. <laughs> and and in and one session he didn't pay me. He he allowed me and my friend to drive through the city as a payment. That was very nice. Yeah, oh, that was fun. <laughs> um, so I have some questions. Uh, uh, I I posted on Facebook uh, in the mm-hmm. structural integration community uh, if they had any questions specific for you that they wanted me to ask you. Mm-hmm. And uh, I thought that would be fun to have a couple of these oh, sure. um, on yeah. here. Um, how are we doing on time? Uh, uh, three, four more minutes, and then I would have to meet my colleague. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, these these uh, these two questions are similar, and what what they're asking is, in the context of not being able to stretch to form dense fascia. Can you please explain more about the mechanisms of change involved concerning the Ruffini receptors and fibroblasts during SI and or direct technique? What specifically happens with the Ruffini receptors and fibroblasts under, strong, uh, under stronger loads? What is, what is the most current explanation of the mechanism of change in fascia from manual therapy, et cetera, brain, uh, bio, biopsychosocial, et cetera? Mm-hmm. It's a pretty, it's a pretty, it's a big question, yeah. and we might have to have you back on uh, on a different show so we can we can sure. cover more of this type well, of that's stuff. A, that's a very intriguing question and a very rich question. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would assume it relates more to Rolfing myofascial mm-hmm. uh, touch than to a Feldenkrais touch or an oil massage touch. Uh, my speculation, I have uh, written about that is when you practice this good old-fashioned dwarfing myofascial release, the melting touches, not uh, recoil techniques or chiropractic manipulation, which is different. Absolutely. Uh, so where you go rather slow, but you're not just putting the weight of one finger on it, where you may be putting several pounds on your, the back of your hand, uh, on a whole thumb, on the whole elbow, and then you slowly plow through or melt through the tissue. And uh, my suspicion is that if you have a relaxing effect, not only under your hand, but it, if it regionally spreads, and you see a shift in the autonomic no- nervous system at the same time, in which the client for the first time since the last 10 minutes takes a longer pause after the exhalation and then the next inhalation starts gently that would be a a clear sign that they have come out of sympathetic mode and you could measure that if you wanted with heart rate variability so if you if you sense a autonomic nervous system relaxation additionally to your local tissue softening under the elbow and if you had the sense that the direction was important. The osteopaths call that local listening. So you push elbow 90 degrees down, nothing happens, and you go 45, and you see ah, it's slightly better, and then you go 41 degree, and then you say that's where the tissue wants to go because the same pressure has less resistance. Mm-hmm. And uh, that is most likely, but we don't have ultimate proof, we only have some basic science features from other experiments, but not with humans pointing in that direction. So if you have that angular sensitivity uh, response, where it, it's not so important uh, if you have the right location, also not important whether you push with 1 Newton or 1.5 Newton, mm-hmm. but whether you have 41 degrees or 39 degrees how flat, how steep you come. That is most likely related to the Rufidi endings in fascia. Mm -hmm. They are slowly adapting, so uh, quick vibration is not so effective for them. Mm -hmm. Um, And they are responsive to different, uh, they have angular windows, sensitive windows. And we know 
know that they are linked with the autonomic nervous system. And that could explain uh, so, some of these longer lasting effects that you get by, by these slow techniques as opposed to a rapid Swedish massage or something like that. Yeah. But that is yeah. suspicion about the Ruffini endings. Interesting. Uh, but there is, of course, much, much more happening. Mm -hmm. uh, I think we have a, a chance of a biomechanical effect on the tissue. Mm -hmm. uh, the ground substance, uh, the constitution of hyaluronic acid can change in two, three minutes. And you don't need 100 kilograms for that. Uh, to change the fiber network that a collagen bundle lengthens forever mm -hmm. or tears into two bundles, they are on dense connective tissues. We have published some mathematical modeling on that. May require more force than you are willing to exert. <laughs> so for the <laughs> IT band to do a sustaining lengthening effect purely by your elbow, mm -hmm. and the IT band is like... Uh, 1.5 millimeters thick, so it's, it's quite a level. Yeah, it's uh, very strong. You would need 100 kilograms. Wow. If you treat it as a non-alive uh, butcher slaughterhouse piece of meat and you ask how many kilograms do I need on a purely mechanical, non-cellular level mm -hmm. to make this long or longer. On softer connective tissue, and we did some calculation on the nasal tissue, you could, on a pure slaughterhouse level, level, without any cells alive, you could lengthen it forever. The question is, do you want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> so if you, pull, if you pull on your earlobe with uh, 10 kilograms and make sure you may be able to lengthen it on a chewing gum level forever. But well, that, that, explains, that explains the, uh, the African uh, yeah, yeah. The, uh, <laughs> earrings, right? Where they have the... <laughs> <laughs> but I hope, as a Ralph, you are not working on a non-alive slaughterhouse chewing gum level. <laughs> yeah, I hope so too. Yeah. That'd be an interesting practice. <laughs> so that you know inside of the ground substance and the collagen fibers, they are living cells. Mm -hmm. And some of the now cells are sensory nerve endings. And the news, this is the first time I say this in English, uh, we know now that the sensory nerve endings in the body-wide facial network of the humans is, hold your breath, more than 100 million. And I didn't know that. I, I thought it's a few hundred thousand. That, yeah. That, yeah that's but that just got published a few weeks ago. And I'm quite wow. excited because that means fascia is your richest sensory organ, not, not only for proprioception, but of all your sensory organs. It's richer than the sense of seeing, which everybody assumed is the richest uh, perceptual organ in humans. But that's, so, that's, re that's, that's really interesting because yeah. that, that speaks to what a lot of structural integration or even yeah. body workers say that they see with their hands. Yeah. I've experienced that doing sessions on multiple occasions yeah. where you really see inside the body when you touch. Yeah. yeah. That's so amazing. you have more than 100 million most of them are stretch sensitive. Only few of them have a higher sensitivity for compression. So you have these stretch sensitive nerve endings everywhere in your body and your brain is, is neglecting them. You're not training yourself in them. Uh, so, so when you touch your client, you're not just touching collagen and this gluey ground substance on the butcher level, but you have millions of nerve endings in there and they feed back into the spinal cord, into different body mappings up there. And that explains the effectiveness that you could have without hammering onto the collagen. And, the, and finally, besides the nerve cells, you have the fibroblasts, and they are the architect. And you can stimulate them to make a stiffer or softer collagen net in the subsequent days and weeks. And that is a different level. So they are the architects of it. Amazing. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Well, I want to be really respectful with your time. And, um, and I know you have to go. And this was absolutely fabulous. Thank you so much for being on the show. And um, is there anything that 
you would like to leave our viewers any advice or any uh, inspirational stuff besides everything that you just said, because it's very inspirational um, that you would like to leave our viewers and listeners with? Yeah. So mo most of the viewers know that, but I only learned about it a few hours ago. You have been talking with Isaac Osborne, who has been creating You Don't Stop Me Now. Uh, this Body Align Pro, I hope I'm not making a stupid mistake, uh, which I think is a great contribution because there you can do a mapping of the body in the posture but put all, all the other stuff into that. Uh, so uh, I want to congratulate you, but uh, those few viewers of this show, maybe 5% who are not aware of Body Align Pro, please look at it. Thank you. I'm, I'm very humbled by your by your plug there. Thank you very much. I really appreciate having you on the show and I look forward to having you on again and uh, have a wonderful day, Robert. Thank you. Thank you. Talk to you next time. All right. Bye. Bye-bye. For more information about BodyLine Align Pro, visit www.bodyalignpro.com. You can download the app for free on the App Store or Google Play. If you are enjoying this, please be sure to subscribe so you can get each new episode as soon as it's available. Once again, thanks for watching.